So welcome back to Stop Fainting Snippets and thank you for joining us again. We're on the topic of wellness and now we're going to talk about wellness via your Vegas or as the team call it, living Las Vegas. <laughs> um, so we've talked about, um, about obviously the state of acceptance and accepting the stress that you're under and living in the moment and this deep sense of well-being that we can foster and we've talked about that. But the second way is a more um, physical or, or biological approach to wellness, and that's by upregulating our vagus nerve. Just remind us, Boone, what the vagus nerve is and how it applies, and we can apply it to wellness. So the vagus nerve is a nerve that originates from the primitive part of the brain. So it forms part of the yin of the yang and yin that forms the autonomic nervous system. So where there is a fright and flight response mediated by the sympathetic nervous system, which gives you adrenaline and cortisol, you have the contrasting yin to that yang, which is called the vagal response, which is mediated by the parasympathetic nervous system. So the vagus nerve is that, that very large nerve that starts from a, a primitive brain and it goes to every aspect of our body. It's the longest nerve in the body and it is something that is more within our control than you think. So the vagus is that bit that promotes a sense of calm, rest, and it promotes bodily functions that are suited for resting, rejuvenating, and replenishing, such as digestion, absorption, secretion of uh, fluids in your tummy, and a deep sense of relaxation. And this is what we can um, talk about today in terms of the specific ways to enhance vagal tone. Mm. So we talked in a, in a previous snippet about breathing yes. and how that can upregulate your vagal tone. Just give us a reminder as to the best way to breathe. Okay, so there are, there are many ways to breathe to enhance vagal tone, but essentially an aware, a conscious awareness of breath, a slow down breathing, nasal, slow, deep and ideally diaphragmatic, which means something like this. So if I put one hand on my chest, one hand on my belly to look at the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is this uh, inverted U-shaped um, muscle that sits here, which should be your muscle of respiration. So if we take a deep breath, imagine on the in-breath, the diaphragm coming down, pushing your belly out, and on the out-breath, the diaphragm sucking up, and the belly going in. So this is the first way, I think, in doing this breathing pattern. And it does something very unique because the, the breath is one of the uh, autonomic control systems which is under dual control. Most of our intrinsic autonomic pathways are under subconscious or unconscious control. So if I said to you, Mel, can you increase your heart rate now? Can you change your body temperature? Can you make your pupils dilate or constrict? Can you engage peristalsis and make your gut go more and more uh, aggressive? You won't be able to think how you could do that. But subconsciously, you are breathing at a particular rate. And if I said to you now, breathe at a different rate, the breath is the only part of the autonomic nervous system that is within dual control. So if you don't think about it, it's under the control of your subconscious autonomic nerve system. If you think about it and you breathe in a certain way, it becomes under conscious control. And mm. this is the power mm. of the breath because it's the one input into the autonomic nerve system. But what you're asking is beyond breath, what else can we do? And I think uh, these are very important concepts. And just to illustrate that, I can say to you, Mel or Trish, can you make your heart rate rise? Just like that, can you? And the answer might be no. But if I said to you, can you think of a really stressful situation, such as being late for your bus, mm -hmm. Trish, and I want you to really relive that memory, i.e. get stressed, what does your heart rate do? It will start to go up, isn't it? And you'll start to behave in a slightly different way as your sympathetic nervous system then comes to the fore. If I said to you, what is the opposite thought or feeling of stress? The easiest one to bring in would be gratitude. Because when you feel deeply grateful for something that is happening in your life, and it could be something simple like listening to this webinar or having heating in your house or you know, lying on a bed 
uh, with a duvet to keep you warm or having children in your house or a spouse. These are all things that you can just think about and engage gratitude. And when you engage gratitude, something interesting happens in your autonomic nervous centers. You are not allowing the stress to come in. You are filling your, your feelings, your autonomic center, which controls feelings. You are changing the substrate of that autonomic center from one of stress and stressful feelings, like being late or being angry at somebody, to that of gratitude. And of course, you can substitute gratitude as you progress in this practice to love, compassion, well-being, equanimity, any other positive emotion, but gratitude is the easiest. So, the top tip here is, from a bottom-up approach, you bring in the breath. And you can do the breath with a conscious awareness of the breath in we talked about. And then the magic trick is you bring in a feeling or an emotional state. And those two coupled together will really start to alter your autonomic nervous system state. And the best way and the best time to do this, I would say, is when you first wake up in the morning, before you pick up your mobile phone, before you attend to the first task of the day or think about your job list, go within. And actually you can lie down, eyes closed, one hand on belly, one hand on chest, and start to breathe just for five minutes, if not two. But bring in five things you're grateful for every morning. And you can name them, just like I said, even if it's simple. And when you engage this vagal response, instead of engaging the opposite sympathetic response by checking your mobile phone to-do list, with a breath, you are setting yourself up for a vagal transition first thing in the morning. Do it at night before you sleep, and if you can, do it also once in the, in the middle of the day. Ideally five minutes um, or, or more, but if not, then two minutes of this breath work is enough to switch you into a high vagal tone mode. Thank you, I feel relaxed already. And thank you for listening.